Okay, so our truck is all painted and ready to assemble. So we're gonna start off by putting the headlights in. Plug them in and then bolt them in. We're gonna put the grill on. We're gonna have to take it back out. But there's some adjustment on the headlights, so I wanted to get them all properly adjusted and gaps right. And it's easy to do when the grill is on and the bumper's off. I'm going to check all of our lights. Throw the closeout panel in there just to keep it out of the way for now. The fillers in for the bumpers on each side of the fender. Now we're going to put our doors back together. And we're going to make our truck better than it was when it was new. We're going to put some extra rust proofing in these doors. I do this on most of the cars I build. Basically just in the seam at the bottom where they always start to rust out when salt and water and dirt collect. You can do the whole inside of the door if you want, but there's really no reason to. Put our door all back together. The glass down in there. Line it up with the regulator. Put the window channel in in the back. Put our weather stripping in. Window channel, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to lift our window up. Tighten down the regulator bolt. Put our clips in for our door panel. Put the window sweep in. Now our upper trim. And the outside trim. We'll put our door panel on. Plug in our window and connect the handle. Line it up, push it all on. And we can bolt it in. Put our little covers on. Check our window, make sure everything works. I'll put the handle on. Slide the front end. And you gotta make sure that the back end grabs underneath the lever. Then slide it forward and clip it in. Once it's in, put the little cap on, screw it in. Now onto the front door. We're gonna put our cavity wax in there. I'll we'll put the door handle on. Same way as the back. A little cap on. Screw it in. Check the door lock, make sure the key works. Now you can put our weather stripping in. Drop our glass down in there. Now rotate it and lock it into its channels. Raise the regulator up so we can get to the bolt. 
put our outside belt molding on. Put our mirror in. Put our clips for our door panel on. Our inside window sweep in. Tighten up our mirror. We can put our water barrier in. There's two little indents at the top that have line up with the holes in the door. So you line those up and it kind of just pushes on. These new GM water barriers are pretty easy to reuse, take on and off. Just make sure it seals real good so you don't have any water leaks. Put our grab handle bracket back on. We put our door panel on. Line it up, snap it all in. Put our bolts in and the covers. A couple more bolts at the bottom. Front door is all done. Now put our wheel liner in. All of our screws. Now we're going to put the running boards or side steps, whatever you want to call them on. These are the ones that came off the parts truck. The truck's a little bit tall. It does have a lift kit on it. These make it a little easier to get in. These are the factory ones. So there's clips that you put in on the back side of the rocker there. And then there's bolts that go up from the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing on the passenger side. It's a little bit more of a pain with the DEF tank in the way. Stupid emissions. Now for a little therapy. And remove these stupid name plates. Makes me feel so much better when these come off. Wasn't bad enough they put the camo vent visors in. They had to have name plates too. Put our other fender liner in. We're going to put our bumper together. The valance at the bottom of the bumper was torn off. And somebody had taken this bumper apart before and put it back together wrong. So now I'm going to take it apart and put it back together the right way. Pull out our bracket. And one of the parking sensors. Take out the clips for the plastic filler on the front. Remove our other bracket now. Thought we could. Had to get some sensors out of there first. Clips out for that filler piece. Now we can take it out. Now 
I had to take that out to get to some of these screws for the lower valance. Taking off all the leftover valance pieces. When it tore the valance off, it bent the bumper tabs down a little bit. So I'm gonna hammer them back into place so that when the valance is on there, it won't be a big opening. The gap will be nice and tight like it's supposed to be. There's the lower valance. Got a couple clips that snap through the bumper and then it bolts on. Those are the bolts I couldn't get to with the other piece in there. Now we're going to put that other piece on. Clips back in it. Now we're going to put our bumper bracket back on. Now I'm going to make sense of what they did wrong with the wiring and fix it. Route it correctly. That wiring harness should really go on the bumper first and then the bracket go on. But since I'd already started putting it on, I just worked around it. But it is routed correctly now. Put all our screws in for our bracket. Tighten them all down. Route the rest of our harness. Plug in our sensors and snap them in. Now we can put the bracket in. And that's how it should go. Just pull that harness through and then plug it into the bracket and, and the fog light. Bolt our bracket in, tighten it down. Now we're going to put the lower bracket on, it holds the bottom of the valance. Now we can put our bumper on, so we're take our grill back off. Bumper is pretty easy. It's just that one plug for the whole bumper. And there's four bolts on the front and two brackets on the rears on the bottom. Each of those brackets only have one bolt that hold the bumper on. So there's actually only six bolts to hold this bumper on. Just kind of move it where we need to and tighten it down. Tighten the bolts on the bottom and put our grill back in. Snap it in. Put our bolts in. Put our closeout panel on. Throw in all our little plastic clips. The front ends all together. Now it's time for some more therapy. It makes me feel even better when it breaks. I didn't break enough of it, it must die.
Now I feel better. Now we're going to throw the bed on. Put the blankets on the bumper ends just so we don't scratch the bed as it slides past. It's kind of a tight fit. It's only about half an inch on each side around the bumpers and then about three quarters of an inch between the cab and the bed. Just take our time. Set the bed down, there's pins on the driver's side, one at the very front bolt and one at the very rear. Once you line those up and drop those pins on, the bed's pretty much lined up. You just put your eight bolts in it and it's done. So if your frame's not straight, you're gonna find out now. Push it around and get it to drop down on those pins. There we go. Make sure it's in there. Check our gaps. Throw our tailgate on. The driver's side on first. Slide the passenger side in. Our cable's on. Your latches. Put our tail light in. Put all the bulbs in. Just pushes in and then or two bolts on the inside. And we're gonna put our gas door on, fuel door. Just rivets on. Make sure you put both rivets in. Don't put tightening one up without the other one in, because they don't always stay aligned. You don't want to have to drill them back out. Now we'll put our bezel in there. Put our cap on. Make sure our cable isn't twisted and that it goes everywhere it's supposed to. And we'll put our clip in there to hold it in. All done. And we'll put our wheel liner in on our new bedside. Put our little mud flaps on there and rock guards, whatever they are. I will put our wheels on. would like to say thank you to Discount Tire for giving me that key for the wheel locks. I went in there and brought one of the lug nuts in. They matched it up for me and handed it to me and said, have a nice day. So they didn't pay me to say that, but it's pretty nice when you get something free from a big company these days. So now we're all done until they get the windshield in it. Uh, and then we got a couple little things left to do to it. Get our inspections on it and we can start driving it. <laughs> 